Hi everyone, Anjita this side. Welcome back to AB Automation Hub. From today onwards, we are going to start with the K6 series. In this video, we will learn what is K6, what are the key features of K6, how we can install it, and in the end, we will also run our first test trip in K6. I have created this mind map for you to understand it better. I have attached all the links also to the official website. So let's get started. The first part is what is K6. K6 is an open source load testing tool, which is written in Go. Before we proceed further, let's understand what is load testing. Load testing is a type of non-functional testing, which checks the application's performance under specific load and conditions. It involves simulating multiple users accessing your web application at the same time, or you can also say sending the request to the server at the same time. Now let's understand what are the key features of K6. So let me expand this one. So the first feature is testing capability. So in K6, you can run high load tests such as spike test, stress test, and soak test. The other feature is you can run your test on the cloud. It has a lifetime access to 500 virtual hours for three users. But in case if you want to go beyond that, you can go to the official website and opt for a paid plan. Then we have the API and the browser testing. Not only totally supports API testing, but also supports browser testing. So for browser testing, you have to use this K6 browser, which is an experimental module now. So if you want to read more about it, you can just click on this link and it will take you to the official website. So we are going to cover this in the upcoming videos also. We will see how we can do browser testing using K6. Let's go back to the mind map. Next is you can also record your test case using the Chrome extension or Firefox extension. There are extensions available for recording your K6 test. For example, if you want to download Chrome extension, you can just click on this link and it will take you to that page. So this is a K6 browser recorder. You can also read more about it from here. Again, this will be covered in the upcoming video. We are going to cover each feature one by one. This is the first video telling you about the key features, but we are going to cover this in detail in the upcoming videos. So with this extension, you can record your test and you can copy that script and run it on your local machine. Next one is extensibility in K6 using XK6, which is a custom builder. For example, if you want to inject fault into your test, for that you can use XK6 disruptor. And in case if you want to view the web-based matrix dashboard, for that you can use XK6 dashboard. So let me expand over here. I've also attached the link. If you want to read more about it, you can just click on this link and it will take you to the official website, which is this one. You can read more about it from here. Fine. Moving to the next one, which is metrics and results. So you can send your test result to the various output format and visualize your test. For example, you want to view it in Grafana or in FluxDB, or you can go for CSV and JSON files as well. Next one is it supports command line execution. You can easily integrate with the CI/CD pipeline. Next is its community and the support. It has a growing community and very good support. Currently, it has 22.6K stars and 1.2K. If you want to check the official GitHub page of K6, you can just click on this and it will take you to the official GitHub of K6. You can clearly see over here, it has 22.6k stars and 1.2k folks. And the current version of K6 is 0.48. It was recently released on 6th of December. Going back, last but not the least, in K6, you can write your test scripts in JavaScript. And you can also collaborate with developers to write the performance test in K6. Next one is, who are the users of K6? So developers can contribute to it. Estates or QAs can contribute to it. Or SRAs. So all the three users can easily write the K6 test case. So now we are done with the introduction part. I will also share this mind map with, and it will be helpful for you. Moving to the next part, which is installation. The installation is pretty simple for K6. It takes less than a minute. So you can easily install K6 on these OS, which is Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. It's very easy to install. You can also check from the official website of K6. So you just have to click on this and we can see. The installation part, if you are using Linux, you're using Mac OS or Windows, you can just check the commands from here. As I'm using Mac, so I'll be installing it using Homebrew. But if you're using Windows or any other OS, you can pretty easy, you just have to copy this code. Go to a terminal, paste the command, and you can see it will be installed in a couple of seconds. It takes less than a minute to install. And in order to see if it is installed or not, what you can do, you can run the command K6 version. It will tell you the latest version which is installed on your system. So it is 0.48, which is the latest version we just saw on the official GitHub page of K6. 
current version is 0.48 so now we are done with the installation part also the last part is running your first test script so for that what we can do you can choose any editor of your choice i will be working on vs code so what i have done i have created my empty project it does not contain anything so i'll create my test and i'll name it as test dot js and over here we will write the code for our first k6 test so my first test would be to call the get api how we can do that so first of all you have to import the http from k6 so we will write import http from k6 http and then you have to write your export default function for test case to run you need to have init code which is basically this one where you import http or import all the configurations and then the next one is the default function where you can write all the the logic so in order to call the get api what i will do you just have to write http dot get and then the url of that api so we have to import http from k6 so that you can use all the http methods like get post it's straightforward it's just http dot that http method and then you are calling the api now go to your terminal and run your first test script so what you have to do you have to be in the same folder so i'm already in the same project so what you have to do in order to run it you have to use the command k6 run and your script name so my script name is test.js so once you run it you will see k6 test case is executed and you can see how fast this is it executed for one iteration for one virtual user because we haven't provided any virtual user as of now that's why by default it's taking one virtual user as i mentioned earlier you can easily check the metrics and the results the detail log you can check for example if you want to see http request failure so over here we don't have any failure that's why it's 0.0 person http request receiving so you can see average request and minimum request maximum request p90 p95 we are going to cover all this in the upcoming videos fine and you can also see http request there was only single request and this is a simple get request which we performed now this was executed for single virtual user what if you want to run it for very virtual user for example if you want to run for 10 virtual users and for 20 iteration so how we can do that so you have to write the command k6 run and hyphen hyphen vus which is basically your virtual users how many virtual users for let's take the example of 10 and then for how many iterations for example if i want to run it for 20 iterations you have to pass the count over here and then your test script name so our test script name is test.js so this is pretty straightforward now if you run your test case it will be executed for 10 virtual users you can see over here 10 virtual users and 20 iterations so in the logs you can clearly see it got executed for 20 iterations and it was shared among 10 virtual users and also you can see http request how many http requests were sent 20 because the total iterations were 20 and the failure request failure is 0.0 percent fine so this is how you can run it using your command line but in case if you want to integrate it with ci cd pipeline so in that case it will be better if you pass the virtual users and all this configuration in your test case itself so for that what we will do we will create options object over here export constant options so inside the options object you can pass virtual users I will take the same example where I'm going to pass 10 and now we are going to pass the iteration. So I'll pass it as 20. Now you don't have to pass virtual users and iterations in your command line script. You have to run your command for running the test script and automatically it will be executing for 10 virtual users and for 20 iterations. So let's go to terminal and run the command k6 run test.js and it will be executed for 20 iterations and 10 virtual users. So let's quickly check it. So you see over there 20 iterations shared among 10 virtual users so this is how you can run your test case for different virtual users and for different iterations you can pass different combinations over here and for the output you can easily check the logs it's very easy to understand you can clearly see from here the request failure zero percent and it executed for how many iterations and for how many virtual users fine so yeah, that's it for the first video. I'll also share this mind map with you. In the upcoming video, we are going to see how we can make a call for post request or if you want to pass some payload, in that case, how we can run the test script. And if you want to pass it for the code, we can see that also. And we will also see how we can get the HTML report for this one so that you can share easily with your team. And I'll be uploading the other videos soon. So if you like the content, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. 
and thank you for watching